Everything in life gets old, but not that not that track. I don't know why. It always, it always gets me shaking. <laughs> Works every time. Every time. All right, everybody. What's up? What's up? Thank you for uh, joining us today. If you can, just uh, sound off in the chat box. Let us know that you can hear us okay. Say hi. Let us know if the AV's coming in okay. And then, what's your word for today? What's your like one word for today? I'm happy, sad, excited, anxious, angry. Like, we'll do a quick check in and just share your one word, whatever it is. Let let your typed voices be heard. <laughs> Gooey, I like that one. You don't see Gooey very often. Veronique back in Paris. I got to see. I'm not even Veronique. sure what that means. What that Gooey? Mm-hmm. I, don't know, I like it. Whatever it means, I'm into it. Anxious. It's great. Okay. Thank it's you. I'm not sure what it means. Beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. We got grateful. Deeply, deeply grateful. We have anxious. Just saying, feeling all loved up after our coaches call. We were just on with our all our coaches. Sophia says, "Calm, I like it." Yeah, we want to. You know, we want to always acknowledge where we're at. Yeah, we were just having this conversation with the coaches, which we often do. Which is like, um, most of us are 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 in patterns and strategies where, truth be told, most of the time we're kind of avoiding our our state. Right, we're trying to alleviate our state, get over our state, uh, get into some other state. And truth be told, avoidance has a has a tendency to catch up with you. All right. It's One like way or another. Tortoise. It's like tortoise and the hare. It's like you're the tortoise running, 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 trying to get out in front of it. But the hare, the hare is uh, patient and eventually the tortoise does have to lay down and take a nap um, because it's using up so much energy. And so like these, these things that we avoid have a, have a tendency to catch up with us. So, um, we Unless get you to have Adderall or Modafinil, then you can just keep <laughs> running. We get to, we get to build a, uh, true. We get to build a resiliency, uh, and a capacity. And that's really to me what personal development, spiritual development is, you know, for a lot of people. And when they get in, it's totally cool that that's fine. Like there's a, a process and procedure to learning, right? Like everything else, like, a, and, and not, that that all has to look the same way, but there's like certain things that everyone hits along the way. And so for, for a lot of you guys, when you first get in here, there's something you like deeply want to resolve right away. You got to transform and change it and shift it. And, and that to me is the starting blocks for any personal development. Like you kind of have to go through your paces with that and, and grapple with what is this reality thing? How is it interacting with me? And can I assert my will on it in some way? Can I do certain work that makes it more manageable, more malleable, more fun, right? And and there's definitely certain things that you could do to impact your experience of reality. And today we're going to be talking about having a breakthrough around everyone's favorite topic, which is really our limitations around receiving, right? That's if I was going to overarch it, but specifically looking at uh, abundance and and money as kind of the the way that we measure in a lot of ways in our society, uh, our ability to receive and um, an output then that we can give. But, and I want to just kind of incept this idea in your mind, if I can, that um, we talked about it today, I got in the coaches training that even like the, the wisest of us, even the most high holy priest, the masterful shaman, you know, whatever word you want to uh, put on it for, whatever background you come from or whatever aligns with you, even that individual man or woman has great challenges in their life. Perhaps even greater challenges than any of us will ever know uh, because of the level that they're at and the capacity that they have to deal with such esoteric existential 
things within their own system. And so Yelena and I laugh that today when we're sitting with our teacher, it looks like two people sitting in a room together on, uh, well, for me anyway, Yelena's uh, across the across the country. But if you've ever seen that scene in The Matrix when they first pull him in and he re- realizes that he's in a computer program with two red chairs, uh, that's pretty much what it looks like when I sit with my teacher. Um, and, you know, there are days that we certainly have philosophical conversations and I ask questions. And there are days where we just sit together uh, every day, every time we go there. At some point, we're, we're basically just sitting with each other. And it's in silence and it's through awareness and it's very connected. And to the untrained eye, if you would walk into that room, it would literally look like two idiots with their eyes closed doing nothing at all. But I I laugh and I share this with you because underneath the surface within our consciousness and our energetics and awareness, it's like we're traveling the cosmos together. There's so much happening. And so, you know, our ability to bring wellness and well-being into our lives, to have safety, to have uh, authentic connection with one another, to have community, to feel just stable and good within your own system, to me is, is more the aim of spiritual development and personal development work than anything else. Because if you can develop those things within yourself, then every action you take and everything you try to do in your life and everything you want to manifest in your life, that's the foundation from which it's sourced, right? And so doing that is like creating very high quality soil and then planting seeds in it versus having very low quality soil and then trying to plant seeds in there. It's much, much easier to grow vegetation plants in soil that's rich with resource, I've never actually used this metaphor before, and I like it a lot. You know, I was just living in a house I moved from, and we had a, in our backyard, we had this like very long hill. And clearly this hill had been neglected for quite some time. And, and we do have some, some knowledge of how to grow things. And so try as we might, we planted a lot of seeds in this, in this uh, clayish type of soil. It was very, very difficult. Our bounty was very small. It was actually quite sad living in California and seeing the amount of water that went into the soil and how little it actually ultimately produced. And I could tell you though, but after about two or three generations of doing that, like where we planted, and as things died and went back into the soil and and added nutrients to it, when we started planting again, we got a much bigger bounty and because the soil was getting reconditioned. And so if you wanna use that as a metaphor for ourselves, that's really what work is about. It's about reconditioning these strategies and patterns inside of our system and so they can get settle down, we can get into a parasympathetic response within our body, uh, resource ourselves, and then manifestation is really your output, right? Your thoughts and your energy, um, the words that you're using, how you're holding your system, those are the plants that you're putting into that fertile soil so that it manifests that which you desire. Now, just because you manifest that which you desire, does that mean you alleviate challenges in your life? I promise you, if like money's an issue for you, I'll use that as, as today's um, example because that's the, what we're going to talk about. Uh, when and if you should be able to manifest a lot more money in your life, it's not going to solve all your problems. You're just going to have the problems that a person has when they have a lot of money. Just like, you know, a person has problems without a lot of money, right? They're, but the money and that energy still has things that you got to look at and be with and learn from. And whatever it is that's going on in your life right now, for better or for worse, even if it's extremely challenging, that is, for better or worse, how your soul is choosing to learn its lessons right now. And if you are willing to, uh, instead of uh, negating it or being at odds with it, which is how most people do it, you begin to um, honor it and even feel privileged by it to some degree because you have to, you get to recognize that there's a part of you that's way more intelligent than this tool that you've been given, which is also very intelligent in its own way, but it's extremely limited tool. Okay. Again, just as a uh, kind of a contrast in what science today says, they'll say that you can see, you can notice about 60 bits of information per second with your brain, 60 bits. Okay. If you don't know what a bit is, that's uh, 60 letters on your keyboard. If you were to type them right now, those are 60 bits. Each letter is really each, each letter is a bit. I believe that's accurate. If you, if anybody knows better than me, please correct me if I'm wrong, okay? So 60 bits of information, and there's something like a million megabytes, right? Is that how it is? Or bytes of, inf- no, a million bytes of information available to your brain at every second. I, I just, again, just because I was reading another book, said we, on, we uh, on a daily basis, absorb 34 gigabytes of information. Wow. 
coming at us. So 60 bits per second. We're not even close. Your brain literally is on autopilot. 95% of everything that you're responding to, everything that you see is programmed in and it's and it's based on a system of efficiency. Your brain would be constantly overwhelmed and it and it is designed to conserve as much energy as possible. And so literally in order to do that, the only way it can do that is through pattern recognition. Okay? And so this is why so many of us feel challenged because our relationship to money, our relationship to our spouse, our relationship to our health, just patterned. There's a reason, I'll say bluntly, obese people have obese children. It's a pattern. There is a reason if you have uh, alcoholism in your family, you're more prone to alcoholism. It's a pattern. It's not, those things have been disproven. It's not genetics. It's not DNA that's doing that. These are, that's pattern recognition. It's what you saw at home. If you saw your parents coping with life through drugs and alcohol, you're more prone to do that. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, you're gonna you're gonna inevitably do that. That's how your brain picks up on stuff. Okay, that's how we deal with it, right? And it's underneath the surface. You didn't sit there and go, oh, okay, well, one day I'll do drugs. One day I'll do, you know, drink a lot of alcohol to cope with this. It doesn't work that way. But when the stress comes, it's what your system knows to do. That's the reaction. That's the response it has. And so, um, I'll just say this last part, and then I'll let can Elon do his uh, intro on this is what I loved Elon said is like, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what you're dealing with, truly, no matter how hard it's been, no matter how hard it's gotten, and, and, and life is gonna continue to evolve and change probably more rapidly than any of us can possibly conceive of over the next few years. You know, if you're not paying attention to what's happening economically and in the business world, and I'm not talking about dire things, I'm just saying technology is about to change all of our lives dramatically over the next few years, more than it already has. Um, so again, no matter where you're at, no matter what you're dealing with, just like that dead soil, it can always be reconditioned. Mm -hmm. It's, you are not doomed to be where you are. <clears throat> and the challenge I want to pose for for anybody here who's dealing with whatever they're dealing with, maybe you're super wealthy, but life is still hard for you, or maybe you're dealing with finances and, and that's really challenging right now is if you want to change that. And how many of you guys want to change something about your life? You want to transform something? Say I in the chat box. If you want to change that, you got to ask yourself, how am I going to do that? What am I going to commit myself to? Because what if you're, if, if what you're committed to is the complaints that you have and the people that you complain to, or what you're committed to is to do things the same way that you did them the year before and the year before and the year before and the year before. And you're not looking for new experiences or how to look at something in a new way or try something in a way you've never tried it before, <clears throat> then it's not that far of a stretch to say, far of a stretch to say that the way that it's been is the way that it will probably continue to be. Your your present and your past are very much going to dictate your future. And a lot of what we do here in this work is helping people move the things that are coming in their future, right? Because again, I won't go into all this, but the way your brain works is it takes past trauma and it basically files it into your future and you just start living into your expectation, right? Your brain, again, is this pattern strategic machine. It's already generating this future right now. You're just walking into your, what your subconscious is creating, right? And the subconscious is so powerful, so powerful. You're, the quality of your subconscious will be the quality of your life, full stop. And so there is a way to recondition it by bringing our body and our awareness into a certain field, like a vibratory field and a certain down, what science calls a down regulation of our nervous system, a parasympathetic response. And when you do that, magic happens in our system. A reconditioning can occur within us and we can begin to alleviate and declutter these layers of strategies and patterns that our mind and our body are, have created in order to survive in this world. And we can recondition that into some uh, new ways of being. And those new ways of being lead to new actions. And those new action leads to new results. And that's how people transform their lives. But most people are really stuck in the world of doing, 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 and the being never changes. And so the being and that, okay, that quote unquote subconscious part is always going to dictate the actions that you take. Those are going to, it's just going to be this reaction that you won't even notice you're doing. You're just that, that's just how you do it. Is it how you do it? Is that the only way to do it? Hmm. 
right? 8 billion people, 8 billion, 8 billion different unique fingerprints. And those fingerprints also are like our fingerprints of our personalities and our experiences. No two people are the same. No two people will ever be the same. Even if we generalize on the surface, we categorize and put people into groups and all these kind of things. Yeah, that's just how they are. It's not. Every single person is having their, their very individualistic uh, responses inside. And for the most part, people are doing this without really paying attention. And, and, and it's one thing to just tell yourself you're going to be mindful and be more aware. It's another thing directly to go to awareness itself. And if you don't know what I mean by that, that's what the training is for, <laughs> is to help you locate your awareness. Because I remember I used to think like being present was like a like this thing that I had to do. I got to be present, right? Like, oh, okay, let me do presence. And it's like, oh, then you get your eyes big and you make sure you're looking at people in the eyes and this kind of stuff. That's not being aware. That's what that's what woke culture think being aware is. Like somehow, you know, riding this high horse and, you know, being this clean person. Nobody's clean. Nobody's fully clean. Everybody's got stuff that they've done that they wish they hadn't done or, you know, spoken to someone harshly um, or reacted in a way that hurt themselves or somebody else. Like we've all done it and we don't need to feel shame about that. We need to just be honest about that so that we can look at what has that created within our system. And mostly when people act that way or are struggling really with any area of life, what they're lacking is a few things well-being, safety, or two. They lack compassion for themselves, and so they don't exude compassion for others, okay? And if you can take care of these three things, well-being, learning how to feel safe inside your body and inside your awareness, compassion for yourself, that is a foundation, that is the type of soil that I wanna generate within my body because if I source anything from there, everything in my life is easier, more graceful, and comes into manifestation in ways that don't harm me, but elicit, you know, joy and beauty in my life. And so this is what hopefully you guys are here for. Um, again, we'll be kind of talking more about, you know, money and, and abundance, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you're looking at. All the work is the same mm -hmm. because it's all about you. It doesn't matter what topic we talk about, relationships, health, money, the source of the work is exactly the same with a slight variation in how it is that you're responding to it. But again, if you focus on the core, if you recognize that everything in this universe came from one thing, even from a biological perspective, everything came from one cell, one piece of bacteria, and then expanded and evolved, expanded and evolved, expanded and evolved, it got more and more complex. That's how the universe is. That's how you are too. So one thought expands, expands, expands. One feeling expands, 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 right? Evolves, expands. And so we want to get to that core. We always want to think about, huh, it's like, how I'm resonating my frequency, how I'm feeling, how I'm sitting inside of my body. Where's my awareness right now? And if I can generate a type of alignment and frequency within myself, that alignment and frequency is what's generating everything that I'm manifesting in my life. And there's going to be a reflection of that. So hopefully you guys are following what I'm saying here. Yeah, <clears throat> there is a, who was it? Let me look on Facebook real quick. Bro, maybe drop that link in there for them for those that are showing up as Facebook user. Uh, I don't have it. I, I oh, you don't have it. it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Anthony, Anthony Hayes says, it's hard to break the negative thoughts when I've had them for over 15 years. That's where people really get stuck, you know, in that. And, and here's, I'm, I'm going to explain to you why it's even harder to break them. Because the way that these thoughts operate is... So, so I'm going to try to go step by step so you guys can see the map. So something happens in life. This machine of ours is going to view it, opine on it, and create some sort of story around what happened. Now, that story is not really based fully in reality. Right? Because it's taking into account all of these other experiences that you've had, all like life, right? It's viewing through that lens. And so this experience, as you're witnessing it, you're not actually witnessing the experience. You're witnessing through the lens of all of these other things that have, have happened. And that's painting this picture. Okay. Now that happens. 
what tends to happen with stories is the story that you're telling yourself all the time is going to create a certain reality. So it's it works in unison, right? It's not like reality's coming at you and you're looking at it from a blank slate and going, oh, this. No, it's not how it occurs. In fact, there's so much story and energetic frequency that is tied into your system through that story that the reality that shows up in, in your worldview can only look a certain way. And that reality tends to prove the story that you have. So when Anthony says it's really difficult to break the thoughts is because on top of the fact that there's these thoughts, and Anthony, you tell me if this is you know, accurate for you, the reality keeps showing up such that it proves the thoughts that you're having. So if people are constantly disappointing you, then it's going to keep your, the reality as you live it is going to keep bringing people to disappoint you. Or if your thing is about heartbreak, or if your thing is about failure, or if your thing is about name, whatever it is, fill in the blank, right? Like the reality keeps showing up. You guys let me know if this, if this resonates for you. Like there's certain things that just keep showing up in your life over and over and over. And they prove the story that you have about yourself, about others, and about life. So it might be something as simple as like, um, yeah, someone says, who was that? I'm just, I'm just going back and forth between Facebook and uh, Restream so I can actually see your guys' comments. Yeah. So, so Anthony, thanks for saying that. You say, yeah, it's true. And I just, but I disappoint myself so much all the time. <clears throat> right on the money. Love it. Sierra says, <laughs> Michael, hi, brain. Why am I such a screw up? Brain. Oh, let me show you in so many ways why you are happy to help. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay, look, there's someone here named Phoenix. <laughs> yeah, no, she's been following us for a while now. That's funny. And it's, and it's like Phoenix, uh, almost the same, Phoenix Ray. And he's going to be Phoenix, Phoenix Rain. <laughs> oh, yeah? You guys picked the middle name? I didn't know that. It's almost identical. Mm -hmm. um, so so back to, to this. So you guys can start to see, and like this is the reason it becomes so difficult to break these thoughts is because you have like, encyclopedia worth of proof that it is this way and you want life to look another way and you're sitting there waiting and hoping that somehow it's going to somehow miraculously show up and prove you wrong and all of a sudden it's like oh now i get it but here's the thing that's not how life works Wayne Dyer used to say this great line. I say it all the time. People live in a world of I'll believe it when I see it. That world doesn't exist. Because you will only always see what you believe. So you have to believe it first and then you begin to see it. And I just had this conversation with one of our clients the other day and she asked me a great question. She's like, well, doesn't it feel like when you're making that transition that you're lying to yourself? So, right, like if we're talking about money, money is hard. You have to work really hard for money, right? Uh, all this stuff. Now, is that true? Right, like I, I'm always of the mindset. I'll come back to to how I answered her question, but I'm always of the mindset. It's like if you look out into the the world, okay, there's certain people that are driven by the cultural conversation of like you have to hustle and you have to grind and three sixty five twenty four seven like the whole thing, right? And we look because there's a few people 
a few select people that have reached a level of success that we all look to. And we're like, wow, look at them. But they're the anomaly. You guys get that? If we're looking at a bell curve, like they're that small, 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 small percentage over here. If hard work worked, it would have worked already. Just let that sink in. I'm assuming most of you worked hard. If hard work worked, you would have already, it would have already worked for you. Most of you have been doing it for decades. So I'm just going to say it's not about the work. So back to this whole thing about like lying. And yes, in the beginning, it might feel like you're lying to yourself. Here's the thing. When you first created the story originally, whatever the story is, I don't give a shit what the story you have around money or whatever it might be, right? That too was a lie. Working hard is the only way to be successful. That's a lie. It's a lie that society and most cultures believe in, right? But just because a whole bunch of people believe it doesn't mean that it's true. It just means that we all bought the bullshit lie. The difference is that you have over the last, however, you know, take however long you've been alive, minus maybe the first three, five years, whatever that number is, that's how long you have been proving the lie to be true. So again, you have a ton of proof that the lie is true, <clears throat> but it's still a lie. And so when we're looking to reprogram or shift out of anything is you got to get that however many decades you've been alive, that's what you're working against. This notion that you could read a book or watch a video and magically you're going to read something or hear something. It's going to be like, oh my God, this all makes sense. And you're going to do all of those, undo all that decades worth of truth finding. How? Under what delusion do you think that that's a reality that's possible? It's like someone's like, oh, I'm 150 pounds overweight. So I'm going to eat this one salad and then I'm going to be healthy. It's like, what? Do you know how long it takes to undo being obese? A long time. So in the same way, whatever it is, that you are constantly dealing with, I want you to get that the shift in the beginning has to come internally. There has to be a shift where you're like, okay, I know that I've believed this bullshit lie, hook, line, and sinker. And I'm willing to notice that my existence and everything around me has fed that lie. And that is why that lie feels true to me today. Even the friends and the people that you roam around with, when they keep spitting the same lie, that same story, because they're living it, guess how that happened? You manifested them too, right? So you would manifest the people that could feed the story. You would manifest the circumstances from your job to your spouse to where you live, all of it inside of that story. So now, like, if you want to undo that, it's like, okay, I'm going to tell myself a new story. And I'm going to be okay that in the beginning, it's going to feel like I told myself a lie. Because that other thing is just as much of a lie. And if that other lie isn't serving you, then begin to tell yourself some new story that over time will begin to, in the same way that the older one did, it will actually begin to reinforce itself through your reality. Now that takes something. 
And where people get stuck and where Satori Prime comes in to get people unstuck is this. If you're only doing it from the mental landscape, from the conceptual, you're going to most likely keep being stuck. Because there's some stuff that's happening internally in your body with your nervous system that also needs to get on board in order for that story and that new paradigm to fully take hold. So if you're doing one without the other, it has a limited level of effectiveness, if we can say that. So where you want to start is, right, like you want to start with that mental kind of like scraping away all the stuff that's there, starting something new, and then dropping into the nervous system and beginning to work on the energetic, like the somatic experience of that story and how's, how it's been impacting you. You marry those two, and I don't care what your conversation is around your finances, your money, your health, any stuck relationships, and there's plenty of people here that are, are happy to share their stories with you of how that's worked and getting unstuck. And then all of a sudden life begins to show up completely differently. Life can only show up, only show up as a perfect energetic match to what is happening inside of you. It cannot be any other way. So if you alter or if you're waiting for the outside world to somehow feed some new energy inside that's not how it works right that's the believe it when i see it you have to first go in change the energy and then watch as the outside world begins to feed that new frequency that you are otherwise and you guys tell me like i'm sure some of you have done personal development work for probably a very long time Without that second piece, it's, it's a long, annoying at points, frustrating with some ahas sprinkled in between to keep you going long enough, but it could be a very, very difficult ride. Yeah. I love this question. I think it's from Anthony. He says, uh, how can I stop my, how can I stop myself from distracting myself during meditation? Keep meditating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is like you know these are these overarching questions because it seems like there's some kind of action that would correct that versus the practice itself and your awareness with the practice that's going to ultimately give you the answer to that like elon and i can tell you when i sit you know here's how i hold my awareness that has been developed over a very very long period of time of applying this incredible technology that we call meditation. And for those of you guys that are in the group, there's a specific way that we meditate. And there's no way in hell, if you pick that up today, that you're going to use that meditation in the same way that Elon and I use that meditation. Okay, like uh, Da Vinci could give you his paintbrush and be like, this is the brush that I painted all these beautiful things with. The Mona Lisa was brushed with this. And I'm going to be like, stick figure. <laughs> You know, like <laughs> same tool, same tool. And so the, the, the difference here, here is, and I say this all the time is like, it's nuance. Mastery is nuance. Last time, last time we were on here, I talked about Elon and you know, he's, he's in a constant state of mastery around tennis. Elon can crush people because of nuance. Getting a little bit of echo from you. Um, <clears throat> so that that's what creates change when you're in a, a a tense moment with yourself or somebody else and the nuance is oh yeah i've practiced this so many times i can bring compassion in this moment where another person would find it nearly impossible to bring compassion to that moment why nuance like here's the thing mastery and we again we just said this on the coaching call is just failing more than everybody else. In order to fail more than everybody else, you got to get on the court more than everybody else. You got to play the game more than everybody else. The only reason Elon and I are where we are in our lives is because for 20 years, without stop, not one time in 20 years, 
have we ever stopped doing something to further our development? Never. Never without a class, never without a teacher, never without a practice, never without some kind of mentorship. And of course, that's changed over the years and what we have felt is important for us at that point in our development, but never. And so there's, you know, we can't give you here. Here's what we learned in 20 years. You do these three things. Everything's going to fix itself. But what I can tell you is that we design everything here in our programs is to give you when we look at everything. Right. So 20 years, tens of thousands of people coached business development, spirituality, mindset, linguistics, therapies, IFS, uh, deep meditation work and tons of plant medicine work. So all this shamanic work. Uh, I mean, the list just goes on and on, right? And again, million dollars invested. Some of you guys look at our, our program and you're like, you want a thousand dollars for that? Well, if I could sit with Jeff Bezos, for example, and find out what he learned by building Amazon, it'd be worth some money. Now, oftentimes people who are struggling with money, their first response is you should be giving away for free. Well, I wish we could do that. Unfortunately, we do live in a capitalistic society. And just like you guys, somehow we got to put food on the table for our families and shelter and still have equity for doing the things that we want to do in our lives. And I could tell you hilariously, when, when we do uh, bookkeeping with our accountants, they are beside themselves with how much of our equity Elon and I put back into our developmental work. You know, I would say like 30 cents out of every dollar that Elon and I earn goes into our development. And if you show me where your money's going, I will show you what you're committed to. And for some of you guys, it might be a harsh reality to like have to face that, but you also got to realize what you're doing mostly is avoiding these patterns through addictions, whether it's gambling or whether it's alcohol or whether it's just being mean to yourself or mean to other people, at the end of the day, from what I can tell out of working with so many people and investing this much money in it, is that everybody wants to feel safe. We want community and we want people around us that we love and that love us back in return. We want to feel compassion towards ourselves. And everything else, right, the fame, the this, the that, Maybe some people really want that. But again, I've been doing a lot of research on this recently and reading a lot of books on people who study this greatly. People don't give a fuck about that. Not really. They care. They think that, that that's what other people think publicly is important. And privately, they don't care about those things. And if we got really honest about what people really privately thought within themselves, what was important, we would change our society dramatically because right now it's, it's set up to have people fail in terms of what's really important to us. So... You know, wherever you are in your life, you know, whether we're your teachers or not, whether we're your mentors, whether our programs are right or wrong for you, like you got to assess that, right? You should never work with anybody who you don't feel alignment with and don't feel trust for. And, you know, assumingly, if you keep showing up here week in and week out and listening to Elon and I, then you enjoy to some degree what we have to say and these things resonate for you. And if that's you, you really want to consider going into a program like these, these things might be motivational, inspirational for you and even maybe even insightful for you at times, but it's not going to change your life. Because listening to an hour of me and Elon talking once a week, or even listening to a podcast or whatever it is, is, is not really the thing that ultimately changes this mechanism. Because it's not just the mind, it really is the body mind. Your mind is, re is responding to what's happening inside of your body. If you don't understand your mind, you're never going to get down into your body. But once you get past the mind and you understand how that mechanism works and you can become aware enough of it, you will stop putting yourself in the same traps over and over again. And then we can get into some really, really deep healing work. And that's why we focus on two separate things. We focus on helping you grow up, which is another way of saying understanding your mind. Because if you have an immature mind, you're going to do immature things. Okay. And it's not your fault. It was just never taught to you. It's not, it's not in school. Like there, there's no place I can ultimately send you to in a 12 years of education where anybody teaches this. And that's insane if you think about it. <laughs> that's absolutely insane that this is not the first thing that is taught to a child. And instead as adults, we have to scour and try to figure out what it is that we are. That's insane that we don't have school for this. And then the next part is really your awakening, your self-realization. 
which is understanding how, what is this connection? Because today I'm telling you, even science knows we have neurons here in our heart, in our, in our gut, even crazier. I just heard Dave Asprey talk about this. You know, we, we have been thinking of, uh, uh, like gut bacteria and, and this kind of stuff in here. And you, they, they have now found the same kind of bacteria in your brain. This is one unit, this nervous system thing. This is your mind. It's not up here. Everything is thinking in its own way and giving you feedback. And so if the feedback that this is sending up here is that everything is scary and you're reaffirming that by watching the news and scary movies and all this kind of stuff, that's what you're committed to. I'm sorry to say. And until you're willing to say, you know what, no more, I'm not going to do that anymore. And that's where life can all really change for people, right? Like everyone's been in a, you know, been single and then said yes to a relationship that they've been in for their whole life. That changed your entire life. Everyone's been in shitty relationships where they're like, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to get this person out of here. And that changed your entire life. So we got to take responsibility for where we're at because no one can do it for you. Your parents can't bring you there. You can bring a horse to water. You can, no one can make a drink. You're the same way. And so like, if you really want to make changes in your life, we're here to divest and share wisdom practices and ways of thinking about things and certain philosophies and practices that after 20 years of doing all this stuff, Elon and I sat back and we're like, what is it that actually works? Not that sounds good on the table and inspires people, motivates them, and they're all excited for a few days, but then nothing happens. We're like, what are the actual things that people get to do on a daily basis, those who are committed enough to take that journey, that genuinely has them be able to transform the foundation and quality of their life? And that's what we teach here. And so if you're if you're interested in that, you know, if you're watching this video, I know if it's on mobile, it looks different. But on this post inside the group, there's a link over there. Or you can just type it in and basically we're just sending you to our messenger page on our, on our business page. It says m.me forward slash Satori Prime or just click that link above if you see it. Or if you can't find it, just let us know that you just say contact me in the chat box below and then someone from our team will reach out to you. And if you, if you, type, if you go to messenger and you type in the word transform or change, doesn't really matter, whatever, whatever you can remember, we will send you information about what it looks like to join our program time and money invested and everything you need to know about how it's delivered and all that kind of stuff. And you can let us know if you feel like you want to enroll in that program, if you don't, or if you just have more questions, we won't take it personal. Okay. However, again, like if you guys are dealing with money stuff, okay, for example, and you don't have any to put into a program, your breakthrough is in creating a game plan for yourself or taking an action that you may have never taken, which may be as simple as reaching out to a friend or family and saying, I really, really wanna do this thing, but I don't have the money to support that right now. Could you help me with that? And create a, create a game where you're gonna go do that. Do you know how many times Elon and I had to do that kind of stuff? Do you know how many times we invested in something that made like the hair on the back of our necks and our buttholes pucker because how scary it was to, to invest in that. Like if you guys think investing in our program is expensive, we invested in a coach that was 15 grand a month. It's terrifying. Even when, even when making good money, spending $15,000 a month with anything is terrifying. So we're not telling you to do anything that we haven't done ourselves, but here's the truth. When you invest in yourself, you, the return on investment is forever. And you can't lose that investment because the work has been done, something has shifted, and it's gonna change the other qualities of your life. So while we understand a lot of you guys are facing financial challenges and we're in very strange economic times, we get that. When this is all over, and it will be over eventually, are you gonna be the same person at the end of that who's still struggling? Or will you have taken this time, which is really a time to pause and reflect and look at things, and you're gonna come out at the end of it a completely different person who is a new being, who can enact a new action, and have new things show up in their life. And that's really my challenge to you if you don't have the resources, but you wanna do this work. And that should always be the first answer you, the first question that you answer to yourself is, do I wanna do this? And if the answer is yes, then get fucking relentless about figuring out how to do it. Instead of saying, well, I want to, but the resources aren't here, cool. Then the resources aren't gonna be there tomorrow and they won't be there next year and they won't be there the year after that. And no matter what arrives as an opportunity, that you want to do, you're going to have the same experience. And what you got to realize that's a strategy 
and a part inside of your system. And if you want that to change, then it's up to you to get committed to something that can change that, whether it's with us or anybody else. Okay. So like, that's, that's my two cents on it. But look, money at the end of the day, simply said, is just energy like everything else. It's a, it's a very, uh, de um, not deceptive. Um, it's a, I want to say it's like an energy that pulls you in because of the programming around it in society. But at its basal function, money is a magnifier. That's all it is. It's an energy that magnifies. It tends to be if you're an asshole and you have more money, you become a bigger asshole. If you're, if you're generous and you have more money, you tend to be more generous, right? So it has this magnification effect. And ultimately, certainly, it can provide things and create more stability in your life. And, and I desire that like anybody else. But every time I have worries about it, and I could tell you from working with people who are very wealthy and, and have loads of it, they still live in fear. They still live in panic. You, you know, when you don't have it, you're afraid that you're, you're not going to get by tomorrow. When you do have it, you're afraid you're going to lose it all. And in both situations, you're creating scarcity. And the, the reality is, is that the money is pointing at something. The energy is pointing at something. Everything points at something. Your health points at something. Your relationship points at something. Money points at something. If you let it. And it can reveal a truth to you about your own system and how it is that you operate in this world. And if you have a practice and you have support like this community, Elon and myself, the teachings, the teachers around here, that can hold your hand and say, you know what, that dark place that you haven't wanted to go into can hold your hand. We're going to go look at it together. And stuff is going to come up and we're going to teach you how to be with it in a way that you've never been with it before so that you can liberate yourself. You could finally be free of it. We cannot be free of anything we don't face. You will never be free of your financial woes if you don't face your financial woes. You guys got that? There are many, many things Elon and I have had to do as two very poor immigrants that grew up around a family that literally squeaked by every month for as long as we can remember in our childhood that we have to constantly look at when we build our business and as we do, uh, as we're upgrading our life that we have to face really old programming that basically says you can't have that or here's how you do it or you work harder or da 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 and like we've tried our programming it doesn't make more money <laughs> like that that wasn't designed for that it was designed for scarcity so again like all you guys get to take a look at what's really going on for you what do you want this year and if this is an area of life that you deeply desire that you want to change in then i say you got to find that courage inside and take that step into the unknown and, I, and, I'm, and I'm telling you from personal experience, I have never comfortably signed up for any program or with any teacher in my life. Elon, have you? Oh, sorry, I muted you before. Have you? Have you? No, never. I'm still getting, getting even the worst echo button right now. Hmm. So I'm, I'm going to mute you again. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it's never comfortable to say yes to a program because ultimately you are saying yes to something unknown. You don't know how it's gonna happen. You don't know how it's gonna work out. You don't know what you're gonna to have to face. And every part of you, including your brain that wants to stay efficient and, and low energy usage, and it goes, well, that's outside the pattern. I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna look at that. That's fucking terrifying. That's scary. Of course it's gonna feel that way. And that may not be an indicator that you shouldn't do that. That might actually be an indicator that you wanna do that. Something I learned very, very early on in personal development was that when they used to say, who wants to share? The first thing everybody thinks is somebody else will go first. <laughs> They'll do it first, right? So nobody raises their hand first because you're putting yourself out there. And heaven forbid you get the wrong, quote unquote, the wrong answer, right? Because we've been programmed to only raise our hand when we know the right answer. The second thing I learned is when, I'm, when somebody asks me to share or do something and I'm nervous as hell, like, like I feel like I'm literally going to leave my body. That is the, the absolute right time to share. That is the moment to raise your hand and say something. Because that energy, that discomfort is actually urging you forward. It's saying, yes, this. It's uncomfortable, but yes, this. It's resonating. You need to open your mouth. And it took me many, many years to, well, a few years to recognize that like, oh, this is actually what a breakthrough feels like. 
And so last thing I'll say here is, and I'll pass it back to Elon, is you want to realize that when you are feeling uncomfortable and you are unsure, that these are the two sensations in our body that always come before we learn something or before we have a breakthrough. Frustration and uncertainty are not signs that you're not doing it right. They're actually signs that you are learning something. You're actually challenging yourself in a way, challenging a belief, challenging a thought, challenging a way you've done something before. And so you got to realize it's going to feel that way. So when, when you're looking at a program, because I see a lot of you guys say, yeah, I want to do this, but blah, blah, blah. And then you have whatever circumstances you have, nothing is going to change from that place. It's just another thing you looked at. It's another time the pattern won that discussion. And it's another missed opportunity to transform something. And so I really want to challenge you again, if you're serious this year to transform, not just a area of your life, but just transform your life. You recognize these things, not as a limitation, but as just part of the journey. And if you can even fall in love and build compassion for these parts, which is ultimately what happens as you take more and more of this work on, if you find compassion for every part of yourself, even the parts that are unsure, and then they stop dictating your life because you, the only thing that can dictate your life is the parts that you can't sit with. Then they take over and they do their own thing. But when you're compassionate with every part of yourself, it, it opens up a world to you guys that you cannot imagine. So. Am I unmuted? You are. Okay. I tried, by the way, a few th different things with Crisp. So it's, I think it's okay now. I think what I was, I was not using the crisp, uh, speaker. I was yeah. using this crisp microphone, but not the speaker. Okay. Um, in any event, I, uh, I highlighted a few things before here. Uh, Janine and Phoenix actually wrote something very similar. Janine wrote, I've been watching positive morning videos, meditating videos on positive thoughts, everything, and can't seem to shake it. Then I just want to sleep. Abraham says, sometimes it's good to step away and sleep, but then I feel lazy. Like I'm not working hard enough. It's like a vicious cycle. Phoenix says in another way, she said, so what needs to be done to acclimate the knowledge and actions? I'm so tired of being stuck. So you can sense in both of their comments that there's this like feeling of stuckness. This like kind of like Janine uh, said the vicious circle and um, Phoenix was talking about just like this feeling of stuck. And I want you to get that it took me the better part of 15 years to get there. Uh, I always make fun of myself, but I guess I'm a very slow learner. Uh, hopefully you guys have not been doing it for that long. I can assure you that if you try to keep this path at the level of cerebral, and what I mean is by, by like doing mindset stuff or acquiring more information, there's some of you guys that think that by listening to Guy and I, or some other guru or some other audiobook or some other video that that is enough to turn your life around. And I don't care what your financial situation is, but I'm telling you right now, it does not work. Mm -mm. Think of any person that is successful in life. Think of any athlete, think of any business owner, think of any person that is successful in life. There's something that we all share in common. And that is that we work with someone who can reflect back to us the things that I don't give a shit how gifted you are, you cannot see in yourself. And if what you're doing is you're playing the game of acquiring more information or just taking more stuff on, you're actually playing to the mind's game. The mind is the one acquiring the information, not you. The mind is then taking that information, spinning it back around in a way that always feel, leaves you feeling like, okay, I'm progressing or I'm doing enough or yes, right? But then when you look at the whole and you end up like Janine and Phoenix feeling stuck or like you're in a vicious cycle, it should be a big fucking red flag to be like, you know what? It ain't working. And if it hasn't worked for X amount of years, 2023 is not going to be the year that all of a sudden magically it is going to work. It's not. The analogy I tell people, it's like when you do that and that's your, your world, 
I'm not saying that like, it's a bad place to start. You want to get more information? Get more information. It's exciting. I get it. But the thing is this. I play a lot of tennis, right? You can watch a bajillion videos. You can watch videos for the next 10 years in slow motion with instruction of the best tennis players on planet Earth. Do you think that when you get on a tennis court, that will have made any difference whatsoever? 1% difference, 2% difference than someone who didn't do anything and walked down the same court? Guys, there's a huge difference between acquiring knowledge and being in the experience of something. At In our community, in all of our teachings, whatever program you do, level one, two, three, four, whatever you end up at, everything here is experiential. Why? Because I don't give a shit about you acquiring more information. Because I know it makes no difference. For anyone that's a parent, you can sit and talk to your kids a million times about, you should not do this, you should not do this, you should not do this. How does the kid learn that they should not do this? They do that thing and then they get hurt or something happens or whatever it might be. That's how we all learn. It is the only way that humans learn is through the act of the experience of something. Sitting in a classroom is not the thing. Getting thrown onto the court, falling flat on your face, having a ball slap you in the face, whatever it is, that is the experience. And it is the only way to learn. So if you want a breakthrough around money, Guy pointed to it. Like you sitting on the sidelines, uh, visualizing money falling out of the sky, doing your money, money mantras, like listening to stuff before you sleep. Like it's okay. It'll get, you like, it'll get you like 8% of the way there. And if 8% of the way there is good for you, like then just keep doing that. But you know this. Think of anything you do competently, masterfully. You write, you cook, you sew, you garden. Did you get to that place by reading a bunch of books on how to do it? Or was the experience of doing it the thing that actually shifted? The rest, honestly, guys, is a bunch of BS. It makes the mind feel like it's progressing and the mind will trick you into being like, oh yeah, look at that aha moment. But you still do the same things mm -hmm. because humans without accountability and without experience, we don't learn anything. We just don't take anything that you've ever done. So I, again, I want to urge you, whatever it takes, I'm telling you right now, we have a team an incredible team of people who we meet every day. And here's our question. How do we support more humans to live a life of peace and ease and flow? That's it. Every day, literally we meet every day and we're like, all right, who are we going to get to be today to make that a reality? That's the invitation. We put our money on, like we put our, our butts on the line, right? Like you join level one, if in the first 14 days, you're not like wowed by the experience of the accountability, the teaching, the this, the that, get your money back. Otherwise, come get your life. <laughs> and and I want to just tell you guys, because we're really looking at, you know, how do we support more of you guys when you're in those situations? And I just want to tell you again, we're, we are not going to devalue our, our work because we, we know how impactful it is. And we also recognize that a lot of you guys are in really dealing with shit, right? Like, you're not just telling us, hey, I don't have money, I wanna do this program. And again, I wanna say, if you are a yes, we have all, so, all sorts of ways that we can support you. And there's sometimes where you just have to be like, you know what, let me go figure this out. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, cause it's urgent to me. We, we've talked about this many times on here, but like, if something's urgent for you, you will figure it out. If your kid needs to go to the hospital, your transmission breaks and you got to get to work like you got to figure out how to get that that handled you're going to go and do it right so if right. your life to you is urgent if transformation is urgent for you then then treat it as such and if it's not that's okay too but just be honest about that with yourself 
okay? But like, that's what it might take. And honestly, just getting to the program might be the breakthrough. the breakthrough that you have been waiting for. And you're like, oh my God, I actually did that. And we can get into the program and, and, and not have to work on that now and just accelerate you into other areas, right? But like, if for whatever reason, like Elon said, you decide that this work is not for you because you're gonna have two modules, two training courses, trust me, that's enough time to figure out whether you wanna do this work or not. We're gonna give you bonuses. Again, you can figure this out when you're with our team and they're gonna give you all, all the information. But one of the bonuses is a, a live event ticket to be with 10 hours of training with Elon and myself. And some of the most advanced work that we could bring through to people who are just learning how to use energetics and awareness. And you get to keep that ticket, whether or not you continue with us or not, because we wanna show you everything. And that might be the experience that, that your consciousness is looking for. So again, we've been looking at how do we structure things to give you as much value as possible. So again, talk to the team and they're gonna send you a video that I made that explains all of this, how the program works, time, money, investment, all these like special little bonuses we have for you guys. And then show up, like treat it like your life depends on it. Because in many cases it really does. So that's part of the reason, just so you guys understand why the price tag is there. Because if we gave you a $97 program, you would treat it like a $97 program. It's like, it's like Michael was saying with the bike, right? Like if, if the bike, you give a kid a bike, then they treat it like garbage. If the kid has to earn the right to buy that bike, they're going to treat it like gold and think about anything else. People, we were, learned this a long time ago. We tried to do all sorts of free offers. People pay to pay attention. You know who our best clients are? The ones that pay us sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 a year. Do you know why? Because they are that committed to their lives. Now, I'm not saying that you need to come up with $60,000. For you, maybe coming up with $1,500 is like what it would be for someone to come up with sixty. But that's where you got to put yourself. It is a new year and there's a new energy available to all of us. And the new year's resolutions that you made last year that you failed on, you will fail on again. Not because there's something wrong with you. Not because you did anything wrong. Just because there's programs inside every one of us that operate in a very specific way. And until you are met and someone reflects that back to you from outside of you, and points you in a new direction and watches as you stumble and then goes, oh, you know what? Do the same thing, but now do it this way. It is the only way. You know, like I, I, my daughter loves to cook and loves to bake and all that stuff. She has friends come over, right? She's nine years old. So this, I mean, she's been doing this now for like two, three years, but like she would go to a friend's house and she was like, hey, why don't we bake together? And then the, the parents would be like, uh, they can't use the oven. So they'd call me and be like, your daughter said that you allowed her to use the oven. I'm like, yeah. They're like, uh, well, there's no way my daughter's doing that. Now, I didn't say, hey, Aaliyah, go in the kitchen. Good luck. Right. I sat there and I worked with her and I was like, OK, this is how we do this and this is how we do that. And then the next time, I'm like, OK, you do it. OK. Instead of this, we do this. And now, you know what? Like she's in there, she's, she cooks breakfast and lunch for her and her brother. Like she helps us with dinner, all these things. I'm like sitting there in awe, but that's what it takes guys. It takes someone. If you look to us and you're like, you know what? These guys have something that I wish I had. The only way to get that is by actually being in there with us. We do these things here for you guys to get a taste of who we are. Some people, you know, come here and like, I don't know what these jackaboos are talking about. Like, I can't stand the way they talk. They curse too much. This one's hair is whatever, right? Like, and they leave. That's fine. That's what these are for. For you to meet us, like in a speed dating situation and go, you know what? I like them. The rest is up to you. You showing up to these lives, like it's not going to get the job done. Period. End of story. It's just not. Um, Broski, I have another call that I got to jump on. Um, so we're, I will leave you guys we're, we're and there. again, I, I, you know, even while we were on the call, uh, someone, someone, uh, joined our level one program, which is super exciting. So, uh, Sean, if you're out there and listening, just congratulations. And for everybody else, just 
reach out to us. Like, let us know how we can support you. You don't have to do this on your own. You really don't. You think you do, and you think it's a sign of weakness if you do, or like ask for help, but it's the greatest, it is the greatest amount of courage to raise your hand and go, you know what? Like, I don't want to do this on my own. I need help. So I just want to honor every single one of you wherever you are in your journey. I want to honor you and thank you for being part of this community because without you, it wouldn't be the same community. And I look forward to being with you guys and working with you guys and sharing some of these tools that have really taken us from overworked, overwhelmed, anxious, stressed to lives of peace and ease. And trust me, there's still tons of stuff that's always happening in our lives. It's just the way that we're able to handle it is infinitely better than it was even five, six years ago. I'll leave you with that. Absolutely. And I just want to let you guys know, uh, you know, if you're talking to someone from our team, you're on the fence about enrolling in a program, like we understand, right? Like we're the creators of the program. We could tell you it's the best thing on planet earth. And you're like, yeah, maybe it is. Maybe it is. And I don't know. The reality is we have tons of students here. We have, you know, not just this community, we have our advanced student communities and there's plenty of people here who have volunteered to give you their time, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes and have a conversation with you about their experience in doing this work. So if you want to hear from their mouth, just ask whoever you're speaking to, one of our specialist consultants uh, and messenger, and they will find someone for you to speak with. Uh, lastly, you can always go to satoriprime.com and there's a testimonials tab there. And we have a, I mean, endless written and video testimonials from people doing this work. Okay. Uh, and so please go watch them. Like when I forget who I am, I go watch those testimonial videos. Because I'm like, okay, because the doubt creeps in like any other human being. And I have to remind myself and I have teachers to remind me all the time. Learning is, is repetition and reminders. Nobody learns without them. You know, nothing. I've never learned anything because it was taught to me one time. And I get into traps like just like every other human being on planet Earth where it's like I forget. I fall off my peg. I get scared. I get overwhelmed, stressed out. And then boom, reminder and poof, right back into my alignment, my fluidity. And I would say what has enhanced greatly, if I can name it, is the, the, how quickly I can find my balance, how fluid energy moves in my body and how I don't fall into uh, deep, dark traps for a very long time because I, I know when I need support, I've been able to have enough repetition with that to see, Hey, I can't get out of this myself. I got to do this practice with another person to find stability, resource myself and get back into my alignment. And I spend, you know, I'm gonna pat myself on the back here, give myself a little kudos for doing so much work. I spend a lot more time in alignment than most people on this planet. Still get knocked off my peg once in a while, life happens. It's challenging out there sometimes. And I spend a lot more time in safety, well-being, connection. And so there's this assuredness and confidence in my system that I can truly be with anything as it arises in my life, which was not where I was even just a few years ago. So if you want real confidence, not overcompensation, but like really like if it arises, I got this. I have the team around me, support around me. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get through this and I'll become more free and liberated in my life. That's, that's really what this community is about. That's what these teachings are about. We'd love to love, 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 love to show you what these programs are about. At the very least, give yourself the gift of giving it a, a like a really hardy try and commit to a process and if it's not for you at least you know you you looked at it and you're, you chose from there but to sit on the sidelines and think you know what's going on in here you definitely don't so so a call to loving arms over here to for more compassion for yourself and for really like taking on not just this year but the rest of your life and your relationships and your health and everything else that you want to create and want to become in this world because i know that your self-expression is important to you. I know your relationships are important to you. I know your self-realization and freedom is important to you. I know this because I've worked with so many people and that just seems to be our, our, our needs and our biology in life. So if you're one of those people, please, 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 and you wanna be here and you wanna do this work, make it happen, figure it out. Thank you as always for your awareness and attention. Uh, we don't take that for granted ever. Thank you for being part of this community for listening to us and what we have to share with you. Uh, we'll see you here next week. And again, we'd love to see you uh, inside of the, the deep work that we do here. Love you all. Have an amazing rest of your Tuesday. See you next time. Peace and love to you. Bye.